And number five will blow your mind. Hello everyone, it's Bart here from Trio Stories. It's good to see you again. I'm bringing you a fresh Lightroom tutorial today. Firstly, a little bit of admin. I'm just wearing these blue light glasses to feel a little bit more intellectual for the purpose of delivering a tutorial. And number two, I desperately need a haircut, so uh, I do apologize for that. Let's get stuck into uh, what we're here for. Six Lightroom tricks or features that you probably didn't know about. I'm willing to bet that you didn't know at least three out of the six. We're going to start off with a couple of the simpler ones. So number one is using the color picker within the HSL panel. This is literally the simplest and most convenient way to selectively edit colors within a photo. So for example, we've got this lovely shot of Sal here and I want to change the hue of the blues. I click on the target adjustment toggle, just there, and click exactly the area that I want to change. So the sky and just drag up or down to get the desired effect. Now in this case, it is purely the blue slider that's moving. However, sometimes you can actually end up, just like here, catching a, a few colors, which means you are actually making adjustments at the same time to a couple of the color channels. This is very intuitive, very quick, and my favorite way to operate um, the HSL panel. Similarly, if for example, I want to desaturate the snow a little bit because there's a bit too much blue creeping in, I click on the saturation, um, target adjustment toggle, click on the snow, drag down to desaturate, drag back up to saturate, and you can just find that balance. Yeah, bob on. Moving on to number two, this is the simplest one in the tutorial, and that is resetting the sliders or the settings quickly. Believe it or not, I did not know this for years. If I wanted to reset the setting, I would drag it back and sort of find zero again and drop the slider. Now, there is a much quicker way to do that. If you want to reset any of the adjustment sliders, just double click it with your mouse or your touchpad and it will return to zero or to the default setting. I'm guessing quite a few of you know that already, but this is a super useful um, feature that not everyone knows about. So we're starting to get into the more complex part of the tutorial. We're going to look at the adjustment brush and how you can use a few really nifty tricks to improve and enhance your local adjustments, as well as just making it quicker and more efficient. So we're gonna use this photograph of Dobby the van. And why is the van called that? Because it's a Renault Master, and Master gave Dobby a sock. Master has given Dobby a sock. And we're going to look at masking out the sky. So normally I'd go in with the brush, fairly soft edges, and just kind of spray the adjustment on. Let's have a look at how that's looking. Okay, it's a pretty quick job. I'll remove sort of these areas. But as you can see, there is quite a lot of spill onto the roof of the van. Now, if you haven't heard of the range mask already, this is a tool that allows you to use two differentiating factors, um, color and luminance, to assist your sort of edge selection when making a local adjustment. So in this case, the sort of bluish colors um, are very similar. The tones are very similar across the sky and, um, and the van. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the luminance range mask. Once we've selected the luminance range mask, we're going to show the mask so that we can see exactly um, where we've painted on. And that red area is where our, where our adjustment is going to take place. Take a look at what happens when I bring this range slider up. It's bringing out the, those contrasting areas of exposure and detecting the edge because of the difference in the exposure. So around 54, 55, we can see that it starts coming off the top of that van and just about there, we can see what a really, really decent job that's done of masking out the top of the van and even actually the more complex areas with the trees. This way, once we deselect the mask and start applying some adjustments, we can see that there's far less spill onto the van and we can uh, be much more free 
with our adjustments without worrying that it's going to look amateur. As you can see, without brushing really carefully to avoid those edges, selecting the perfect like amount of feathering so that it looks natural, we've been able to um, identify that edge using the range mask and Lightroom kind of helped us out making the local adjustment, so it's pretty useful. Moving away from the brush tool for a second, but staying in the domain of local adjustments, we're going to look at the clone tool. So I've got this photograph for you, a top down of Zlatny Rat in, Cro in Croatia, where I did a fairly thorough cleanup job um, using the clone tool. So as you can see, these areas in the water were cleaned up as well as um, a number of the kind of more distracting bits and shadows, uh, this tent thing or whatever in the middle. If you click on the spot removal tool, there is a lot of little spots here. And we all know the struggle of trying to select one of them, move it slightly or change its setting. I found out about this little tool called Tool Overlay, which you can use to basically manipulate how you want the spots to behave. So for example, if I wanted to add another spot, I would have to either get it perfectly in the gap or make it elsewhere and then drag it on top or to the side. And we all know how frustrating that is. Now, what if I was to tell you, you can just click tool overlay, never. And all of a sudden those spots disappear. Same in the water, there is not a single spot in sight. Their effects are obviously still active, but now you can layer additional spots without any problems at all. And when you're ready to view them again, you can just toggle it back on to always and you'll be able to see all of your spots. The difference between always and auto is that the automatic ones will only appear when you're hovering over the image. So when you're searching for them and always will just mean that they are constantly, constantly on and you can see where the local adjustments are. This is a pretty useful tool, um, especially when you're doing a thorough cloning spot removal job. It'll save you a lot of time. The one we've been waiting for, the one that I promised will blow your mind. We're going back to the brush tool. We've got this beautiful photograph of Casper windsurfing at sunset in Croatia, taken from the drone, bob on. But let's say I want to do an adjustment of the water only. Here I am painting the water, blah, 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 as you do. Now, I could use the range mask, just like we did before. I could drop, sample that area, and as you can see, it's already helping me to mask Casper away from the water, to differentiate the water from the windsurfer. But bear with. If you hold Command on Mac, I don't know what it is on PC, I've never used one of those, if you hold Command on Mac while brushing, it activates an automatic edge control, edge assist, I think it's called edge assist, which basically, oh my goodness, which will help you to keep those edges clean. So if you look, I'm painting over the horizon here, but there is absolutely no spillage of the mask over the horizon at all. Tell me your mind blown. Let's just do another example of that. So. Let's say I want to adjust the yellow hood of this yellow coat. I hope you're not fed up of seeing the cinematic yellow coat yet. If I am to just draw on the mask quickly like that, loads of spill. Now, watch what happens when I do it holding command. Look at that. Zero spillage to the sky. Okay, there's a little bit of spillage here onto the fur, which I can quickly tidy up, but look at that. Super quick, lifesaver, incredible. I really hope you're mind blown at this point. If you're not, I'm disappointed. This is, I think, my favorite feature of them all from this tutorial, but I've still got one more for you. We'll stick with this photo and I'm going to look at the detail panel and the sharpening. If you're just sharpening away like this, blah, blah, you've got the little preview window here. Yeah, that's quite helpful. You know, you can select like the eye, you can sharpen, see how that's affecting the eye. All well and good. The option key changes the image to black and white so that you can preview more easily the, the kind of sharpening without the distraction of color. But see what happens when you use the masking slider 
again, it's really difficult to see how it's affecting your image. But as soon as you press Option, ooh, you can mask out just that bit that you want sharpening. So let's say around 36, 38, Sal's looking a little bit scary there, I'm not gonna lie. That is Sal's figure, and we can add a decent amount of sharpening now to the person while keeping that background silky smooth, no grain, buttery, bokeh goodness. So once again, let me just show you that. Hold option, slide the masking slider, and you can see here where your sharpening is affecting the image. So you can see that those white portions are where the sharpening has been applied. So we've got absolutely nothing now, nothing at all now in the background. So that beautifully smooth background is not going to be affected, but we are getting that incredible sharpening in the eyes and where it matters in our portrait. That's all I've got for you for today. I'm sorry, There's, there'll be more, there'll be more. I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you found it useful. Um, these are just six tricks or functions of Lightroom that are kind of um, small bits, but they make a big difference when you're editing. They helped me a great deal, and I hope that they will help you and improve your editing experience and speed it up for you as well. Until next time. We're really good at YouTube. We're Sal and Bart from Trio Stories. Outstanding at the Outstanding YouTube. Outstanding at the YouTube. Like and subscribe. Good Love day. You. Bye.